It's like showing the sort of skeleton of the song. Do you listen to ensembles and orchestras to maybe hear the pieces coming together so you can maybe use it in your own music as well? Or? Yeah, I listened to that a bit. When we were making the record, I got really interested in bands that had existed before the advent of recording. Um, like, for example, like a little string band or like a, a Balkan kind of small orchestra with some, a little bit of strings, horns, some, you know, some, uh, some strummed instruments and singers who have, who have to project because they don't have micro microphones. Um, and it's a really special, powerful thing. You really can't get that sound from anything other than a band that knows how to play together with no amplification and has been doing it for a really long time. And then you just kind of record them with one mic. Um, there's all kinds of things people do with like dynamics that are just 100% physical. I'm strumming ever so slightly harder at this part, ever so slightly softer in that part. And you throw together some kind of like band that's, you know, five to 15 people and they're all doing this perfectly. And there's, especially if there's a song, then I'm really, really attached to it if it's great. Um, I just think that microphones are really great and recording techniques and using the studio as an instrument and all that crap is great. But um, there's something wonderful about just a bunch of musicians standing there being sort of physical and making music, like forcibly making vibrations in the air, you know. Uh, uh, you also produce uh, records for other artists I, uh, I read, is that true? Or, uh, uh huh, yeah, yeah I yeah. produced, uh, w I got this offer to produce a Rocky Erickson record and in preparation for that I started producing this Bird of Youth record, which was sort of how I learned how to produce. Um, and that was also really nice because in a way it was like good preparation for making this Sockerville record. So I really learned a lot making both of those records. And so, and, and, and the thing that you told like uh, the, the, the string ensembles uh, 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 playing everything uh, yeah, really accurate on, on certain dynamics. But do, you, do you try to use the, such things in those productions as well, things that you've learned? like listening to that? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it depends though. There's like a string ensemble that's really accurate, like you say, that can be really nice. But there can also be the string ensemble that sounds like a bunch of nine-year-olds learning violin. And that can be really nice too. It's really, I'm a real big believer in sort of being able to find a redeeming quality in a lot of different things and, and in there not being a right way to do something or, 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 or every approach having value. And I, uh, one of my favorite little things that I like to do is pick something that I think is really pretty aesthetically irredeemable and try to figure out a way that, to use it in a fun way. So one of the challenges on this record was uh, backup singers, chick backup singers. Like, because that's the cheesiest thing ever. When you go to see some, like, some band and they've got like a, the girls in the black dresses with the like yeah. elbow gloves or whatever the hell they're called. Um, it's the worst. And you're like, oh my God, this is the worst. And so that was my challenge, is like, how can we use this sort of chick backup trio and have it be cool, you know, aesthetically viable or something. Uh, so yeah, there's, that stuff is really fun.